Sonia Anderson, and I work at Denver Botanic Gardens, and I also am involved with the Plant Select program. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about pollinators today, um, why it's important to think about pollinators when we're gardening in our home gardens, what we can do to help pollinators in our home, gar our home gardens, and also how Plant Select is also helpful in this area of helping out pollinators in our home gardens. We hear a lot today about the plight of pollinators. Mostly we hear about honeybees. Um, we hear terms like colony collapse disorder and um, the varroa mite and other um, er, um, pesticides, all things which are threats to honeybees. And we understand that pollinators, including bees, are really important to our world, um, food, economics, um, everything, just the beauty of flowers. Um, and so a lot of us ask ourselves, you know, what can I do? What can I do to help? Um, and there's a lot that we can do just on an individual basis in our own home gardens, um, planting the kinds of plants that support pollinators, trying not to do things that are harmful to pollinators, and just generally providing a really good pollinator environment. So one of the main things in our home gardens that we can do to support pollinators is planting things that they like. Um, so different pollinators that you might think about are, and we've got the honeybees, which we hear about a lot, but honeybees are actually not native to North America. They were brought in from Europe they're great pollinators, which is why they're um, used for pollination, especially for crop pollination. Um, but there are native bees that are also very important pollinators. So native pollinators include bumblebees, butterflies, hummingbirds, moths. Those are some of the most significant pollinators that we have that would be coming around our gardens. There are different types of plants that those different pollinators are attracted to. So if you have a butterfly, for example, would want a area, like a nice wide flower that it can rest on. So it lands on the flower, nice, likes a nice wide flower, and it likes a sunny spot, and it likes an area that's not too windy. Wide flowers like uh, Shasta daisies, um, Areogonums, Echinaceas, those are all good butterfly plants. And then you have like the hummingbird plants. The hummingbirds are attracted to red color. They don't only uh, um, visit red flowered plants, but they are attracted to red especially. And they're also attracted to long tubular flowers They have um, that they can put their beak in to get the nectar that's way down at the base of the tube. Um, and then you have bees. Bees probably frequent the widest variety of flowers. Um, they're not going to go something after something that a hummingbird likes because they're probably not going to fit down the tube um, that the hummingbird can stick its beak down. So they're going to go for something that they can crawl around on and that they can reach the nectar um, pretty easily um, from just crawling around on the surface of the flower. If you have these three plants in your garden, you have the red flowering penstemons, you have the red flowering salvias, and you have the red birds in a tree, you are guaranteed hummers hands down. So one of the keys to gardening for pollinators is making sure that you're providing um, sustenance for them throughout as much of the season as possible. So it's easy to have a lot of things in bloom that they like right in the middle of the summer. Um, so you wanna also try to make sure that you've got things that are blooming as early as possible and things that are blooming as late as possible into the fall. And that way they have a smorgasbord all year long, or almost all year long. <laughs> um, so some of the earlier blooming plant select plants that, uh, that the pollinators really like are the columbines. Um, we have the Denver gold columbine and also the remembrance columbine, the nice blue and white contrast. Echium, or the red feathers, that's a fantastic pollinator plant. The bees like it, the hawk moths like it, the hummingbirds like it, everybody likes it. 
Cranby meridima is a fairly early blooming one that the bees also like. The pensamins are some of the earliest blooming plants on the program and the bees love those all the way from the penstemon mensarum, the Grand Mesa bee tongue that starts very early in the season and then you go to the Red Rocks and Pikes Peak and Shadow Mountain and Carolyn's Hope which bloom all summer long so those are those are fantastic. And then like I said in the middle of the season it's easy to have a lot of things in bloom. Um, it would be hard to think of a plant select plant that blooms in the middle of the season that a bee wouldn't like. Um, but then you want to think about the fall as well. You want to think about the later blooming plants. The rabbit brush is a late blooming plant and that is both, it's both a good nectar source for pollinators and it's also a food source for some pollinators. Some uh, pollinators um, actually eat the plant, their larvae eat the plant. And so it's another way that you're helping pollinators, you're feeding their young. And the last one that I can think of is the, uh, the seven sunflower tree. It's like a large shrub or small tree, very late blooming, beautiful bloom. It's fragrant and the bees are all over it. It's fantastic. So it's very easy to create a home garden using plant select plants that supports pollinators. You just go to our website, plantselect.org. You, in the plant search, you select attracts birds, butterflies, and or bees, along with any other criteria, you're looking for perennial, a tree, shade, full sun, whatever, and it'll print you out a list of plants that fit your criteria, and there you go.